There's the audio. That should work. It switched capture cards on me. There, that should stop the double echo. I had to turn it up to, I have to turn this down to figure out where the audio is here, but I see the little thing moving. So <laughs> everyone thumbs up now there's audio. This is, this is like my old vlogs that I used to do where I had no idea if anything worked. Oh no, no, no. Don't do this. Why did that happen? And there we go. Can you hear me now? Good. <laughs> That's a weird problem. Where did uh unrelated to anything you guys are doing? Barrier quit working. Hold on. We'll figure that out. There we go. Too many keys, too many buttons. All right. Now we can actually start doing stuff. Oh man. Okay. Loud and clear. Yeah, hopefully no one cranked their headphones up. <laughs> I did get a new microphone, so there is a change there, perhaps. I think it sounds better. Um, yeah, I did not get a Verizon sponsorship, so none of that. So I have too many places to look. Let's see. This is, we'll do the Inception thing. So we got that going on. Um, no. Yeah, actually, this does work because I can do this. So I can share what's on this screen right here. Even though you don't see me, you can see what's on the screen. I think if I do that, okay. Ooh, yeah, then you see me and I'm looking at you. I have too many cameras and I got confused for a minute here. <laughs> but let's get it all back to normal. I, I'm trying to get everything so even though I'm using StreamYard, everything can go through my little switcher right here. That's one of the goals because it makes it a lot easier so I can present content here. Now that we've figured out how all of this works, because every day is a new day, especially today. <laughs> uh, yeah. So for those of you who know, Travis is in um, is in Michigan here and definitely um, Michigan sucks at the moment because it's somewhere in between flooding, raining, ice and all those things. Uh, my backyard is currently flooded, I think. I don't. I haven't gone up much, but we'll take a look here because we got my fancy dancy synologies here. We can pull it up if anyone wants to see how flooded is Tom's backyard. Pull up the cameras. Oh. It's it's icing over now, so let me uh, switch. So, yes, this is what that looks like right now. This This is all a flood of... It's two rivers converging across Tom's backyard. <laughs> and that river continues on to here and then continues on to the street. So, <laughs> yeah. And somewhere in between, yes, there's, it's also turning the snow. So you don't want to be driving in this. That's why Travis is mentioning that. Definitely a mess out there. Let's see, which mic do I have now? Um, e I got to look at the get. I want to make sure because there's more than one model, of course. And my orders. Make sure I have the exact model. I got to add it to my um, parts list. But this is a. Uh, Sennheiser MKE 600 shotgun. Sennheiser makes good stuff, though. We do call it Lake Lawrence, so for sure. Um, I don't know which monitor you're asking about. I'll assume it's the widescreen. It's the AOC 49-inch. Yes, I do have the uh, Doge, Doge truck. I, I'd show you my keychain. It didn't. We made a special keychain that says Doge instead of Dodge because, well, you know, I I was lucky with Doge. I'm I'm not a crypto person, but I got lucky with Doge. <laughs> yeah, even if you have a four by four truck, it's actually the aggravation really comes down to being around all those other people that are on the road. So that's where some of those issues are. Yeah. 
Um, what RG45 crimper we use? I don't know. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, I don't crimp any. I am not the wire puller. Um, so I'm the person who knows the least about it. I always have to ask the people who are. So I'm not even sure which one they're using. Probably cable matters, but I don't know for sure. They like a few different ones. Is there a proximity effect? Yes, in general there is, but I stay within this proximity. And if for some reason I was going to move, which would also require me moving the camera, I would also have to move the microphone at that point. So yeah, there is a proximity to it, but my proximity doesn't change much. So the disadvantage of a shotgun is gonna be the proximity. The advantage is it stays out of frame, but then again, you have a proximity when you're using the type of microphones where you have to be right up on top of them because you have to stay right up on top of them because they have a very narrow way they do it. Shotguns have a narrow, like pointing way they do it for the pickup field. Uh, there is a strong off axis color change on that one, probably from the reflections. Oh yeah. Well, these are the, uh, two, this is the Canon camera and this one, no, nope, not that. This is the Sony camera. So they look, they're, they're in different positions. So they have very different, uh, looks to them. Matter of fact, let's, we're going to fix this real quick by going to, We'll make it big. So there we go. And you can see the Sony camera looks different because it's at a completely different angle. So that's why this one looks so much different. There we go. Back to. <laughs> yeah. So lots of lots of things going on here. Built my current router from Spare Legacy Parts. It's running an i5-3470. Is it safe? I don't know the is it safe question. I don't know if you built it right. Sure. <laughs> I don't understand the question exactly. Oh, colors the audio when I'm off access. Okay. <laughs> I don't always associate those things together, but fair enough. Hello from the other side of the pond. Any thoughts or suggestions on PFSense HA S2S VPNs? Um, set it up. I, it works as far as I know. Use whatever. I, I'm for site to site. I think WireGuard makes a good VPN. So that's, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Um, hmm. I don't think, let me look. The, uh, there's no new information. So let's go ahead and put that back up over there. Uh, no new information on the Linode thing. I, I actually have a few friends that are trying to get some more information. None of us have really know anything other than what, um, I mean, there's a Motley Fool link where you can read the shareholder comments and that's about it. There's not a lot of information about the Linode purchase from Akamai. You spent five years doing pro AVI. Cool. The audio video stuff is, um, I mean, it's interesting. I only, I'm not, I never really, well, I, you know, I like good sound quality and things like that from, you know, listening to audio or watching movies, but setting it up for recording and things like that. I don't have a deep, strong interest in it. Like it's not a passion of mine. It's more of a necessity to get things done so I can create content. So I, you know, it, it's, I had to do a lot of reading and research, which is kind of fun to do. Uh, but my passion isn't in the whole audio setup. It's more of a, I need to get these things done so I can just press button, create content. What are the things I need to make this as efficient as possible? That's a lot of times that I'm working towards. Uh, from a hardware vulnerability perspective, I don't understand um, what the hardware vulnerability you're worried about is. Like, will someone physically have access to it vulnerability like that? I'm not understanding the question. Maybe. Uh, 
Yeah, this is, you know, I the one of the things, reason I put this in a header, I don't know if I was going to make a video on it or not, but it's more like cautious optimism. Because if Linode wants to compete with Azure AWS, they can't just do it. They'll do it eventually, maybe. But if they get some investment money, they can do it sooner. They can do it faster. And if Akamai treats them properly and does things properly, not just tries to turn it into a cash cow, tries to actually gen generate a real uh, enhanced business model, if you will, out of it, I think that's a better goal. So hopefully that's what their plan is. I got the wrong thing switched here. There we go. Now I can actually see that. Have you raised your MSP prices? A lot of companies are raising them due to inflation. Uh, we raise them every year because inflation happens every year. So we raised them um, in the beginning of 2021. It's kind of a staggered raising. We actually start raising prices before because you get new onboards. And you don't want to slap the new onboards with them. So there's kind of a trailing behind for everybody to get caught up. But yeah, we, we raise prices um, as some things cost more money now. So and I what Corey Thompson says right here is one of the things that is a big advantage. I have a feeling it is not by coincidence that they didn't buy a different company. Akamai bought Linode. I have a feeling there was probably already some partnerships uh, in terms of CDN, but this is one of those things where there's a great opportunity because you want to deliver your application, but does your application scale? Well, there's some scaling limitations. So you have to integrate with a CDN. Being able to scale and integrate with a CDN of the parent company seems like an alignment opportunity for the two companies to work together. So interesting. Um, I, I hope this is where they're going with it, just making a better product, a better service, a better offering. I hope I'm right about that. I hope it's not doom and gloom. <laughs> uh, let's see, no any good uh, audio switches pass through? Um. Audio, I don't know what you're asking. Audio switches past you. I don't I don't do any audio switching, so I don't know. Uh, should I use a separate drive for Squid? I never use Squid. So I've heard though, if you're gonna it, it ha it's a little bit more write intensive. But I mean most systems, I guess it depends on the system you have. If you're using if you build PFSense and you're just using a standard SSD, it should be fine for Squid, but I don't use Squid, so I don't know just how write intensive it is, if it actually needs a RAID. Um, I just never use the, I never use it. It just creates more headaches. New to YubiKeys, to be honest, done only a bit of research on uh, what happens if you are on mobile devices, they're an app. Uh, yes, there is. Matter of fact, it's, um, I, I can probably show this pretty easily here, so let me. Grab my fancy YubiKey here. Um, did I erase it already? I may have erased it. That's okay. We can play with something and make something new. There we go. Boy, this is not easy. I'm trying to press button for code. Come on. Oh, that, ain't, that isn't going to work Not for this one. Yes, there's an app. Uh, and you can see this is, it says L Lawrence Systems, and it's a test I had set up. I'm going to go over this. I got to get a, another phone set up with recording or something on it so I can demo how this works. So, yes, you can use it. This is an NFC, YubiKey 5. The NFC ones do work with phones. There is an app for it. Um, I've been reprogramming this to try some different things, including uh, replays and things like that. So uh, I wasn't sure if it'd work. Also, it needs me to press it. And I can't press it because um, I'm just using the NFC. But you can store up to 32 of your rotating 
TOTPs on here, in addition to some of the other OTP functionality this has, there's a lot of nuance to how these work. And I also, because someone said when me and Jay did the video the other day, we didn't cover FIDO as much. I want to cover how the FIDO and SSH keys work because there's actually a couple different ways to implement this. Um, and that's where the confusion of you can integrate it where it uses OTP, the YubiKey OTP and authenticates, but against YubiKey servers. But FIDO doesn't need the servers. So if you set it up with FIDO and generate a key with this, those are the things I'm going to be working on so I can try to make an explainer of all of it because the the information, even for me to, to put it all together in one place, is kind of scattered. It's like, hey, here's an announcement of how that works. Here's a separate write-up of how this works. Here's another write-up that seems like the first write-up, but it's a different methodology. What's the difference? Well, it's because there's more than one authentication module on this device. Um, so I want to make sure I get into those details of the different methodologies that are supported. That way you can choose which one you want to use. So let's see here. Afternoon, Cody. So we see Cody in here. Is the video gray for anyone else? Yeah, I'm noticing... So... It's perfectly colored over there, but by the time I look at it on this screen, which I'm looking at the same output you are here when it loops through the live stream, there's like a haze to it that I don't understand completely why. I'm not sure what's causing that. Matter of fact, um, let me mute this microphone so you don't get double because there's more than one mic over here. If I add another me in here, this me is not gray. That me is gray. And let's switch cameras. Do you see how there's a color grading difference between them? So, kind of strange. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what's causing it. That's a new. It wasn't doing it last week when I tested this. So, <laughs> um, let me get rid of the two toms. Which one do we want to remove? I think this is. Okay, there we go. Make sure I got rid of the right one, because the 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 one on the well, actually, I had to get the left one because the one on the right doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> Love Yubi Keys. I have it locking down both Bitwarden and Gmail. Works on my phone and my computer. Yes, you can use them with those. Make sure you have a backup method. Now, the options are having two Yubi Keys. The other option is Bitwarden's an easy example. You can use Bitwarden with a Yubi Key, but you still can use your standard OTP at the same time. So you can use the Yubi Key for convenience and then the OTP for uh, if you lose your Yubi Key. That way you don't have to buy two of these things. Um, we haven't touched DNS thingy in a long time. We, we use, uh, untangle. If, if someone needs a firewall that does content filtering, we use untangle. If it's part of our managed service provisioning, it's, it's different tooling, um, loaded on each endpoint for our managed services. Um, I can't tell if it's a YouTube codec problem or if it's a issue with, um, StreamYard. I, I don't know who's to blame in this particular instance here. Bash the like button. <laughs> so does YubiKey give out samples? Yeah, you can ask. I don't think so. <laughs> If I use the key, do I need a separate key for each service? I want to lock down, computer, login, Dropbox, Gmail, or with, with three physical... No, that's actually the best part. You can use one key for all of those. That's actually a clever way these work. That's a, It's a good question because that's one of the little confusing points on there um, because you worry that, okay, I use it for a particular service. What if that service was compromised? Well, did that mean it compromised your key? It did not. That's the good news. The way the keys work is it's there's a public-private key pair that's essentially set up. So even though, and I can actually pull this up and show you guys. Let me let's let's uh, pull something up on the screen and do a YubiKey authentication. So we'll go ahead and <laughs> you can't see my YubiKey private keys. I have my private keys set up too, so you can. 
um, do those. But we're going to go ahead and set up the put the YubiKey key in here. Zoom in a bit. Uh, is it this button here? Oh, there we go. Now we're going to put the YubiKey key in. And we're going to touch a few times on the key. Do you see how each one of these is different? So there's my part of my key identifier is right there, is in these first part, the first little bits on here. That's part of the key identifier. And then the next one is part of the OTP, one-time use that's generated. Well, whoops, we got it in the wrong spot. So if someone compromises it, these are not reusable. This is actually something I had just shared and tweeted um, earlier today because you can't replay them. And I was attempting to do some replays and this is a validation. Um, you get a replayed OTP. So if you actually try to use these and they have been used before, you'll actually get a replay on them uh, because they're incrementally going up each time. One of the important factors inside of how the UV keys work. Somewhere I probably have as well. Let's see. Uh, does YubiKey have a mode where you enter a password to use the YubiKey? I don't think so. I don't think there's a password you can set on the YubiKey. I have more than one here, so I'll hold this one. That one's plugged in. Um, but these are the YubiKey Touch. And there we go. you got to touch this little device. Now, because it's your second factor, not only factor of, the, of authentication, and because... If someone were to, let's say I, right now there's a YubiKey plugged into my computer over here. And let's say someone gets into my computer. They still can't use my YubiKey because the way I have it configured is you got to touch it. If you don't touch it, it doesn't do the authentication. So what I want to do is when I get my video down, I do a demo of here's how you SSH in. But without someone touching the YubiKey, it's not going to get you any further. So they still require that. And by the way, second factor of authentication, still need a password. I go into my Bitwarden. I go to log in. I type in my password. It says, enter your second authentication. Then you go to the YubiKey, put your finger on it, and authenticates. So that's how you can do that. You could mirror and interact with your PC with uh, Scrappy to record. Yeah, um, I have another recording tool I use. I haven't tried that one. Um, I can't remember. What's the name of the one I have? Um, mm -hmm. The other one I have is called... Um, A to Z Screen Record. I just turned that on and set it up. Uh, it works good for that. So you see me sure it's blown out like that, or is it the output of the software? It looks like high video game, but no clue. Mm, I don't know. It doesn't do it when I record. It does it when I do the YouTube, and specifically it's doing it with StreamYard. Um, when I don't use StreamYard, it wasn't doing it. So it has something to do with the way StreamYard ingests video to YouTube. It might be a color space issue, uh, full versus partial. That's a guess. Um because I'm using partial color, but it could be a full color. I don't know. Yeah, they do have the pin for the key as well. That's another option too. There's a lot of there's a lot of things these have configuration options for. Yeah, I had to rephrase it. Yeah, YouTube is, um, the amount of spam uh, got bad for a while. YouTube has done a good job of stopping it. But unfortunately, the people are collateral damage of all the spam being stopped, of not being able to type messages. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a real challenge. Uh, the bio, so the bio requires you to set up a pin, um, in case the fingerprint reader doesn't work, but the bio has less support for things than this does. So the bio is missing some other support, which I, 
is, is one of the reasons I still like these over the bio, which is this is the Yubi Key 5 NFC. Yubi Key OBT is not as popular as Fido, but it's good news that Fido is more secure. It's phishing resistant. Yeah. Yeah, the thing I want to cover, and we find, probably have a bookmark somewhere I can pull up. Um, go over here. We'll pull it up. Th there's a few different instructions. Um, we'll pull this up, and we'll pull up this. Then we'll switch to this. And here is OTPs Explained. This is a, uh, I can drop a link into the live stream real quick. Uh, that'll look interesting. For those of you curious how it works, um, they have a whole explainer, but this is the other one too, because this is how you generate keys. So now they have a new option, and this is it requires some of the latest SSH, but as long as you have, and we'll go ahead and zoom in so it's easier to read on the screen here, uh, they have an option to add key pairs. It's an underscore SK. What this is, is your ECDSA key, but also has the SK, and that is what allows it to be an authorized key. So this is how you can use it with UTF. So this is I want to uh, test around with this and do a tutorial on this right here. Um, you can look up, uh, well, I can, I'll drop a link here for it, for those curious, but it, it's kind of a neat idea that they had here to do it this way. This is different than using it um, as just the, with the API key. Jay has a video, Jay from Learn Linux TV has a video. If you go to Learn Linux TV, look at their YouTube channel, search for YubiKey, you'll find a video where they explain how to set it up with the uh, YubiKey OTP. I want to do it a little different with the Fido one and stuff. So, yeah, this is, you never really understood the need for things like the YubiKey until you enable 2FA on all the things. You get tired of looking at codes on your phone. Um, yeah, so let's, let's just say. Let me figure out how many do I have in here. I use Aegis, which is cool. And I have um, quite a few on here. I don't know. It doesn't give me a count. I have more than 32. It won't even fit on there. Fun thing about Aegis. Actually, this might be kind of a fun thing. Can we do this? Can we? Um, let's see. This server is dead. It just doesn't exist. This is a demo. So it doesn't reveal anything. But we want to set something up. This is kind of a cool feature. I want to do a review of Aegis because I think it's just a neat program. And here we go. Here's a cool feature that Aegis has for 2FA. You guys can have my QR code. Let's see if that resolution is good enough for you to steal a QR code from YouTube. <laughs> there we go. Uh, how close can we get it? Is it still focusing? There you go. This is for a teleport demo I did. The server's been deleted, so. But uh, yeah, once you have a ton of 2FA numbers rolling on there, I'm not going to list them all. All I'm going to say is, um, I can probably do it, give you an idea. There's just, the entire phone is just a scroll of them. I have it on so many different things. Ah. Hey, awesome, it worked. That's cool. You now have my 2FA code for a demo server that I've already deleted. <laughs> but uh, Aegis is a cool tool because not only does it have the TOTP numbers, um, we could filter for demo. So we go to demo. I think I only have one demo in here. Yeah, good. So me and whoever scanned that code, I can't, sorry, I can't say your name easily. Um, well, actually, depending on the time delay of YouTube, <laughs> we actually are going to have uh, the same code. We just shared a secret over YouTube. I should make a fun game out of this, of 
um, do TOTP, throw some QR codes and put us all in sync with each other for uh, how that works so we can have some piece of information. Fun stuff. Hey, it matches, so there's not too much of a time delay here. <laughs> Successfully used YouTube to transport 2FA secrets. That's uh, We'll add that to the list of things Tom has done today now. That's pretty cool. Now, what would also be interesting is I want to cover the fact that you can actually reprogram these with the same uh, code on more than one of these. But... But there's some challenges that come with it, because if you look at how this works, um, one of the challenges is the in, the usage counter, uh, session usage. So because it always expects, I think they have it in here somewhere, new counter server value, even though you can copy a YubiKey, this is one of the interesting things is that... Um, if I use one key but not the other, you have to hit the key at least as many times as it was used to get the counter to go up before it'll start accepting the keys because the key key systems are out of sequence with each other. So yeah, there's a lot of details to these. I want to I want to get in the weeds, so to speak, and making sure I have a concise explainer to how these things work. It's why it's taking me a lot longer than expected to do this video. But um, I want to make sure all the people's questions are answered so they understand the security of them. Uh, you could say, you know. You could say things like it's just a black box and uh, it's been vetted by security people, but why not dive into with my audience here some of the details of how the authentication mechanisms work so you can have an opportunity to understand them. Oh, yeah, one of the worst 2FA solutions I've seen is one um, I've had for a previous shop. Deny allow buttons, uh, but the button almost happened on the screen. Are you speaking of duo authentication? I think um, duo authentication on their phone. Find a screenshot of it. This right here, um, yeah, is this the one to approve, deny? This is how they looked on there. So they're pretty big, so it made it easy for people to hit the wrong one. I, that's one thing about Duo. I I don't, I mean, we have some clients using it because it's a requirement for what they're doing, but the, this, the buttons are big. <laughs> and so there's that. Uh, do you use a bare Git repo to save dot files or standard repo with sim links? How about I do this? Let's make it easy. And there, there are um, sim links in there, but you're asking because you probably didn't know. Here we go. We'll just throw up the dot files I have. There's a, They're linked in most of my comments, but I threw my dot files in here. So if you're interested, and you'll see how it I, how I have them configured. For TOTB, you can set up the initial code generation in Aegis, then use Aegis to share the QR code and scan it with the Yubico Authenticator, and then add the same code into a gen uh, a code generator into YubiKey. Yes, yeah, that absolutely that series of events is correct. Um. Yep, that's the one. Ah, yes, now complain. Uh, YubiKey 5 supports, the YubiKey 5 NSC supports everything. That's why I buy these. This is what we buy for my staff. This is what we use. Um, that way, all the different methodologies are supported because uh, you only save a few dollars going with the lesser ones. Go with the better one. You have all the methodologies. Is PFSense not able to connect to recognize my cable on two and a half gig Ethernet? My WAN is showing unknown for the link speed. My guess is you don't have a card that supports two and a half gig properly with PFSense. That's my guess. So I don't know. 
the, I like the fact that Aegis auto backs up. I have the sync thing installed, which then auto backs up in case I lose my phone. Yes, uh, you can import export out of Aegis and you can um, use it for import export, uh, backing up an individual file. And I don't think it even has an option. That file backup it does always is encrypted. I don't think there's an op option to not have it encrypted, which is really a nice feature. Yeah, I try. I need to do more on GitHub. Um, I just need to throw more things on there that to to make them public. But a lot of people have asked for my .dot files. I don't think they're anything special. But for those of you who are interested, there's nothing proprietary about them. So I threw them up on GitHub. Should I get two YubiKeys and add both to my 2FA account, put the second key in a safe place, safe deposit, for example? If you have a service that you want to authenticate with YubiKey, you want to make sure that you have a backup plan. That backup plan can be a second YubiKey. That backup plan can be TOTP. It really depends on the service. Bitwarden, for example, I only need one key for, because if I do lose my YubiKey, Bitwarden does support having multiple YubiKeys, but... What I want is the TOTP to be my backup, so I don't have to program two keys. So it kind of comes down to that service. Many services do offer additional methods of authentication as opposed to exclusive methods of authentication, like either or. They either allow TOTP or allow YubiKey, but not both. Um, I do like systems that have both. That way, if you lose your YubiKey, eh, that sucks, but you know, at least you have a backup method to get into all those accounts and drop the YubiKey. Um, PFSense LECP and QoS not working is a way to make it work. I would post it in our forums. I've never tested it. YubiKey 5 NFC, excellent device. Got two of them for backup. It doesn't hurt as they are cheap compared to being owned by someone. Oh, yes. That's one thing for sure. They are way cheaper than getting your account pwned. Um, yeah, we, we have too many valuable things that are attached to security. Um, yes, absolutely. Now, I haven't tried this, but I mean, among the things I believe you can do is lock your Android phone with these. That would be a, a great for security, but bad if you lost one because now you can't unlock your own phone. And if you do uh, lock your phone with it, like put a password in any YubiKey and you can put, hang the YubiKey around your neck. That way you could just put your phone to your chest and unlock it. At that point, you know, you, uh, I, I've thought about getting the NFC uh, implant right here. So those are kind of cool too. Ah, Lawrence Drop Systems. You know, I'm trying to emulate those big channels. I mean, I don't have the kind of subscribers that people who drop things have. Yeah, Synology 2FA, but make sure you have um, email working. Time goes to skewing can cause issues. Yeah. Time skewing. If you're using time-based authentication, time skewing can really cause some problems. Uh, what's your plan if you can't get the PF Sense NetGate hardware? It hasn't. I it, well, at some point, um, it's just a matter of finding what hardware we can get. Uh, that's it, it. Hasn't really come to that yet, but it's kind of getting close because uh, availability is so tight. For the most part, we try to buy the NetGate hardware. If not, I mean, what are you going to do? If you, if the project has to be done, we're going to have to find some hardware to load it on. That's that's all there is to it, and we'll have to address it. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but it seems like it's going to because I know um, the 6100s are still out of stock, and they're supposed to start shipping, I think, this month or next month. It, I, it's on their website. Uh, so, you know, we have clients that want to upgrade that are waiting on upgrades, Um because they're got, you know, older equipment, but we're just kind of waiting on those parts to come back in stock. If not, then yeah, if there's no other option, then, you know, there's plenty of those little solid state boxes like the protect leaves and things like that out there that will suffice because if I have no choice, I, the, the project has to get done at some point. I understand where you're coming from. So certainly an issue. Um, I am going to do a video too on the differences between PFSense and PFSense Plus, because now that you can upgrade to 
PF Sense Plus. Um, your home lab install, your lab install, your, well, a lot of different options here. Um, and you can even take a custom built boxes, you know, on that topic and then buy support for a license fee of 129 a year, currently free, but 129 a year. There's a lot of opportunities here, but that's going to be one of those things. Like, what's the difference if I go with PF Sense Plus? And I'm going to, I am going to do a video on that because I know that's one of the things that is an issue. Wow. Someone says April. That's, that's not good. Let's go over to Neck 8. Hey, we can bring up two things here, but um, yep, there we go. So NetGate 6200 is out of stock, will resume in early April. Yeah. And um, here's the new subscriptions for these right here. So I'm going to do a video talking about uh, this pretty soon as well, just to cover some of the details. I know people are kind of curious about it. Uh, what you get, and it's it's a short list um, right now. Let me. The current list of things you get are the OpenVPN import tool, the QAT crypto, the new ZFS widget that was released, the AWS VPN wizard, and IPsec export for Apple and PowerShell. Those are the current only upsells, so to speak, of the PFSense. Plus, so PF Sense is still PF Sense Community Edition. Plus, it's just a few add-ons that you can get as part of that. But there still seems to be some confusion around it of, you know, what all does it come with? And right now, I don't know why Netgate doesn't have like a list of exactly the differences. Um, but so I'll make one. So simple as that. It's, it's a short list. So maybe that's why they didn't bother doing it. Um, but it'll be one of those things. I'm a little unclear. I've seen people say that, but I don't know that it ends support for CE at the end of the year. But then again, CE technically doesn't really have support. So, and everyone told me when they came out with Plus a year ago, not everyone, I, I won't, I, I, I would be wrong to say everyone. A lot of comments came that PF Sense 2.5 is the last version ever of PF Sense, but then here we are at 2.6. So, yeah. Says it on our website. Hmm. I'll have to find that because I know you can't post a link. So, let me. Um... Professional services, buy support, support FAC. We're going to read through it together. Um, support packages page. I don't know if someone wants to tweet me where exactly it says that, that would be helpful. I'm not saying it doesn't. I just don't know where it says it exactly. Or someone, maybe someone in the comments knows exactly where I should be looking. It's in the docs. Okay, we can try that. Uh, PF Sense. Uh, let's see. PF Sense CE Docs. There's a lot to read here. So I've had people say that, but I didn't see anyone linking to it, which was I, someone said it on Reddit too. And I said, where, and I didn't see the where maybe they replied. So, uh, well, I didn't know they had an EPUB version. That's actually kind of cool. Releases. Older unsupported. 252. Uh, 
errata, general. So if someone, like I said, if someone wants to tweet it at me or something to figure out where it's at, I'm interested. Because people say a lot of things. I, I, I like to at least link to them so they can be verified. Are you a Microsoft CSP? Um, yeah, we get our stuff through PAX 8 for that. Okay, tweet me if you find it. That's great. So KV created video content moving forward, NetGate device, non-NetGate device, how we edit a backup file taken from NetGate device, restoring to a non-NetGate device. So the, that's a separate video just in general of how you move config files between devices. I'm going to work on that one because uh, people get confused on that. But you can swap config files between NetGate and non-NetGate devices. Matter of fact, you can go between um, PFSense Plus and PFSense CE. They're inter the, the, the config files are interchangeable. Roadmap still says 2.7 uh, for PSNCE. Okay. I have the new Supermicro Converged Network Adapter. Could it be a BSD issue why speed is showing unknown? Could be. They may. It, it may be working at that speed. It just doesn't have the display for that speed. Uh, go to the command line and see if there's a mismatch between the way it's connected from the command line and stating the right one versus the um, UI being able to display that. Because there, there sometimes are, you know, interpretations in the UI that may not display the proper speed, but it's connected properly. So Unified Dream Machine or PFSense? Oh, PFSense way over the Unified Dream Machine. But it depends on your use case. Maybe the Dream Machine's a better fit for you because you don't need any of the advanced features that PFSense offers. There is no, that I am aware of, migration between OpenSense and PFSense. The config files are different. So I don't know of any interpreters that will make them compatible. Found it. Did you tweet it at me? I can pull up my Twitter. So where is the I see you tweeted links to me. Where where do I find this? So let's let's pull this over to so we can all look together and try to read this together. Ah. Uh. Support on PFC installation not available after 1231. Support on PFC CE installation. That's different wording than saying they're not supporting it. Support, because this is their support page for subscriptions. So no charge for a CE license because it's free, but they're just not offering any support on the which is actually common a lot of companies do not offer support well very much outside of their forums um on the free installation so it's probably just forum support there's this is their subscription support if i'm understanding this correctly so i see it but it's not the same as it's not end of lifing a product um i'm not aware of any yubikey authentication available on pfsense Random thought. I wish I could custom name the individual LAN connections on a Synology. Yes, that'd be cool.
Um, do you know how Nike classifies work from home? Does it qualify for a non-commercial license? Um, well, if you are using it for work versus personal, I think that's different than lab. Uh, but that is kind of a, you know, we all work online now. So are we all using it for work? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not going to even guess on interpreting that. Um, I'm, I don't know anything about the HSM series specifically. If I run PF sense in my Proxmox is Proxmox fired as well with PF sense. You can configure it that way. It can be done. It all depends on how you configure it. So that's, that's what that's really going to come down to is how you set it up. So if you virtualize your firewall and you take the virtualization platform and you dedicate the WAN to a spot, you know, inbound to that, technically there's a le at some layer, there's a lack of firewall, but you're passing it off and hoping the firewall built under Proxmox that says we've dedicated this input, this particular network interface for the WAN. Uh, you're hoping Proxmox handles that properly and passes it along to uh, PFSense. Additionally, the um, way to do it is if you did pass through of the virtualized network interface, then you kind of alleviate that worry and then it becomes firewalled because you're passing the device through. It comes down to configuration. Uh, Tom, don't get it scrolled down on a product page. Hold on. Did I, am I reading the wrong thing? Is there something further down here? I'm, I'm trying to figure out who doesn't get it. <laughs> Free download, telephone. So the only thing I see is support on PF Sense CE installation is not available after. It w I mean, it's kind of, there's not a lot there, but I don't know. Am I missing something? Who's wrong? Am I wrong? Link to the PF Sense roadmap on Twitter. That's what someone, oh, um, PF Sense Roadmap. Let's pull that up. Uh, I, I have it pulled up here. Is this the roadmap we're looking for? It's just Redmine Projects PF Sense. Redmine.pfsense.org slash projects. Uh, we'll just throw it in this. In this. <laughs> that looks, this looks fun, right? <laughs> when is the yodeling channel coming? I have no idea. That's a whole other topic. Someone, someone may have Googled that if they figured. Uh, PF Sense Plus next. Future. I don't know. I spent more time on this. I'm, I'm, I'm unclear what exactly is uh, doing that. So grilling channel. There we go. I should do a whole thing on food. I do like grilling. Grilling and smoking and uh, smoked meats and stuff like that. Oh, 
It's really good. Barbecue. Hello from Brazil. Have you had any issues with PFSense CE having trouble seeing if there's an update available? 252 CE last night kept saying no, the update wasn't available. Um, it's probably DNS. You probably have something configured wrong or you're blocking update servers. Uh, I haven't run into that at all. All the machines we have don't have that problem. Um, we've been updating a lot of PFSense systems, but uh, it, there's some posts where people were having this problem. It's usually because you don't have the DNS server set inside a PFSense or something along those lines. That's a guess. Hot sauce channel. What kind of smoker do I have? Um, do I have a picture of my smoker? Let me look. Maybe. I have an acorn smoker. Now we're going into the off-topic part of this, right? Yeah, I don't have a picture of my smoker. Well, I probably do somewhere. I just have too many pictures. Actually, I don't just grill meats. I found a picture of my grill. Uh, I grilled peaches as well, so... You can, you can grill all kinds of things. But of course, grilled jalapenos. Yep. Grilled jalapenos with grilled, um, that's actually chorizo. So you grill the jalapenos, grill the chorizo, mix it all together and make a nice smoky Mexican dish. So yes, I like cooking. Peaches come from a can. Oh, if you haven't had peaches on the grill, man, you're missing out. They're super good. They are really tasty. Apples, um, you, apples on the grill, not bad. Not bad. What else is on my list of things to talk about? What is my live stream called? <laughs> here, we'll actually do this here. Um, smash the like button and things like that too. So we have 216 concurrent ver viewers and we have 68 likes. So I'll go ahead and do that. Make that YouTube algorithm happy so we can get that going on there. Go back over here. Pineapple. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's not a cult but feels like a cult? Smoking food. You are not wrong at all. You are you are on topic for that. It it is it becomes our own language of things and smoking this. Ah, oh, it's so good though too. Oh, that's not good. But Mother Nature has given you an excuse to buy a new grill. I like the Acorn Grill a lot. Uh, crazy thing is. The price on the Acorn Grill is higher now than when I bought it. I was looking around for them, and I'm like, why are they so expensive? Probably supply chain. So, supply and command. <laughs> um, I'm not sure you're, that when you're that far behind... I don't know. There, there's steps you have to do when you're that far behind, but I don't know what they are. You'll have to look that one up and post in their forums on that. If you're all the way on version 2.3, which is not supported, I don't know what intermediary version or if you need to go to an intermediary version in order to get the upgrade to work. When you think of any food, you instantly think, I wonder if it can be smoked. And the answer is always, I'm going to try it. It doesn't always turn out, but I'm always going to try it. So the WAN is 2.5 gig and LAN is gigabyte. How does an ISP connection speed if it's more than 1 gig to clients? That's the cool part. It doesn't. That's you, you can, You're only as fast as the weakest link in your chain. So that's where your ISP um, you know, can offer you more speeds, but if you have no way to deliver those speeds on the other side of your firewall, or if the firewall itself cannot handle those speeds, they're just throwing numbers at you that you can't do anything with. Check Twitter. All right, will do.
halfway down the page. All right. You linked me to, and I'll just drag it over here. You linked me to the 6100 page, but I'm not sure what you want me to see. We mentioned this earlier that these are um, out of stock, shipping in April. Uh, I don't think there's anything. Yeah, that's just all about the 6100. It was halfway down the product page. All right. No problem. I'm happy to clarify. HA Proxy is splitting some errors. Huh. I don't know. Not a problem I've run into. Post Center Forums for support. What monitor is that? That one is a um, uh, AOC 49 inch. Oh yeah, the date was moved from March to April. I know, that's terrible. There is supply chain sucks. AOC, that sounds like the right one. It's in my kit link. So I'll throw that on there for people curious. Matter of fact, here, we'll just show my entire kit link in here because all the different things from all my different videos are broke down into kit links. And what these do, it's kit.co, kit.co slash Lawrence Systems. And I'm starting, I got to get back into doing this. Whenever I do product videos, I try to make a kit link. If it's like a grouping of products, it builds a kit and I can put all the links to all the products I use uh, to make them easy to find as opposed to setting them all up in YouTube links. The other advantage of using kit links is I reference the same products sometimes more than once. But if I forgot that I referenced a product in three different videos, I can update the kit link and all those videos go to the kit link and the kit link, I can update the products in the videos uh, to you know wherever they're available or things like that. Uh, a graphics card in, for TrueNAS to help in video playback. I, I, I think you're asking about pass-through. I've never tested pass-through in TrueNAS. How can you forward multiple ports to HA proxy so you can use SSH and domain names or just use the config? Um, I don't think you can use SSH with HA proxy. I could be wrong, but I've never, I haven't tried, but I don't think that'll work. Yeah, I'm not sure that SSH can be used with a proxy like that. SSH wasn't really made to proxy. Um, I mean, there might be some way to do it, but I, not something I've ever worked on. What else is in here? Actually, now I got too many things open. Let's start closing them all. So many windows. HA proxy, how is it different? It's mostly the same. Um, I don't know the nuances to exactly what features are different. Obviously, they're implemented differently. They're different projects, but there's they probably have more similarities than differences. Well, one big one is going to be um, you can use Nginx as just a straight up uh, like a, you know, HTTP system, a web system versus HA proxies, not, I don't think can be used that way. We never use PXE servers anymore. So we don't, you're not likely to ever see a video on it because we just don't use them. Um, without them, 
yeah, without using it, I, I don't really have a desire to do uh, a video on it because I'd have to get, I'd have to start digging around on it again and remember all the stuff from it, but it's just, we don't have a use case for it anymore. Hey, thank you. I am excited uh, to see that True NAS Open Storage is here because that is on my to-do list. It's, to, it's so close. We're only days. I was looking at the date. It's February 17th. And on February uh, 22nd, so 2-2-22, two, two, yeah, two, we're going to get the full version of True NAS Scale. So that's exciting that that's going to be here. So that's, um, I'm, I am working on, so... Because I was moving my studio and so many other things, I have I, I have fallen behind on making videos. If you look, there's like this giant gap in my channel for Tom not getting videos done. But I really want to get back to making some of the videos, of course, because that's why I built the new studio. And for the studio was a combination of DIY and DIY. Why am I building this? But it's hard to find people to build things, um, follow my vision, and there's the way I wanted it built at the expediency of which I wanted it built. So I built it <laughs> and here we are. Now I'm trying to figure out how to uh, make everything happen, but I'm going to uh, get back into doing some of the true NAS videos, especially I want to load the release candidate on my system here because I have, um, we'll pull up the photo of it. Do, 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 do. I was in, hold on, there's got to be a picture here somewhere. Here it is. There's a picture. We have a pair of these little true NAS boxes down here. So they're they're going to get, um, this is actually all my video storage and replication is on here. And yes, we're going to be um, swapping those over to true NAS scale so we can uh, get, get some videos done on that. So I'm excited about there. Uh, do I have a better picture? No. Somewhere. I, I have. I don't know where it is. I thought I had a picture of the rack. Sorry for those of you that have seen the disaster that is the cable management. Or as I would call it, cable mismanagement of what's going on over there. I have not I have not done cable management. Every I cleaned up the studio, which is well cable managed. The every the the back of the studio, what the other side of this wall is where all the disaster still is. <laughs> my video is blurry yep probably 2 there we go not blurry here it kind of depends it's gonna it's a bandwidth thing so it gets uploaded it gets it gets blurry sometimes from uh delivery over the internet Ooh, another Australian in here. Excited to see what you cook up. Yes, it'll be um, because the two synchronize to each other and then there's synchronization going from my office to here and from here to my office. Uh, it's going to be a mix. And one of the things I want to cover, and obviously the people from TrueNAS already know this, but the interoperability of doing replications from core to scale should work perfectly fine. It did it when I tested it before. So we should be able to have all of those functionalities still work because you can have a mixed environment. So just to let you know, the, the TrueNAS core family and the TrueNAS uh, scale family will all interrupt happy together. So you can have, like I will, a, a mixed use case of different servers all over the place. <laughs> hey, Blit. A bit blurry doesn't matter. You got this. Yeah, I am not. I don't look any better. People say, why don't you have a 4K camera? And I'm like, because I don't look better in 4K, my tutorials won't be better in 4K. So the, my main camera, the one I'm looking at right now, not 4K. It looks at me. I don't care. <laughs> Oklahoma. That state is just okay. <laughs> I love that joke. I need some true NAS storage for IP camera. Video seem crisper in the studio. It's not as crisp on here, but it kind of depends on things like how far away I am from stuff and um, changes they've made to it. So, yes.
Yeah, True NAS employs people all over the place. Um, we are uh, True NAS and IX Systems uh, resellers, so we get to engage with them and great team, and they are uh, diverse and from all over the place. Really nice people. Can you turn off different SSID for Unified APs? I only want one SSID on a couple and all in others. Yes, that is something you can do with Unify. There are a few Aussies lurking each week to kick off Friday mornings. Oh, okay, that's right. It's her, it's Friday morning for the Aussies. I like the Aussie hot sauces. I have a few of those. Do you have enterprise hardware preferences you like to support and recommend? Do you consult uh, based on budget? I actually like the Dell. Dell's the easiest, com much easier than HP to deal with, I feel. Um, so my my partial preference is for Dell. I would say the runner-up on there would probably be Super Micro. We found them pretty easy to deal with. But um, HP, I always like to reference uh, Craft Computing, Jeff. So if you look up Craft Computing, HP... And he talks about the licenses they have and how confusing their licensing system is. The fact that they put some, but not all, of their BIOSes on the, behind a paywall. It's silliness. So, And uh, Travis is confirming that, yes, you can have the uh, different Unify access points. And you set up um, groupings on there. And you build... You build the groups, and then you can assign SSIDs based on a group. That way, the same SSID is not being broadcast on every one of your Unify devices. Server desktops, I like Dell laptops. Lenovo, Lenovo does a great laptop. You know, that's one of the reasons I have a Lenovo laptop for myself. We probably buy the most of those uh, for our clients like the Lenovo series, like just the ThinkPad series. The Carbon series is a nice high end one. Their ThinkPad series are nice. They're generally easy to get support for. Super micro for server hardware, very little BS. Yes. No, no uh, crazy sales team. You ever thought about getting a System76 laptop? Absolutely. Um, at the time I bought my laptop, which was like four years ago or three years ago, I couldn't pass up the deal. And so I ended up not buying a System76. The current ThinkPad I have was like almost half off with a three-year next day business warranty. And I ended up paying like $700 for it with uh, I think it's got 16 gigs of RAM in it, mobile processor, ThinkPad series. I got it. You can't buy, I don't, it's probably almost worth now depreciated close to what I paid for it several years ago. So I got it such a good deal, but that was the other one I was looking at. I really like the system 76 laptops, but now that I am working from home, I probably have a few more years of life on my current Lenovo laptop. And then I'm not sure what I will get because I don't really have a need for a laptop as much anymore. I'm not really working mobile that much at all since the pandemic. So I'm. it's not a big necessity for me. Yeah, this is one of the things that Dell has just done a killer job on. And this, it's not just Dell. Unfortunately, they're out of bit, they went out of business, but Gateway, I believe, used to do this as well. You just pull up the support tag and go get things done. That's so simple. You can't do that with some of the other companies as easily, and it's HP's notoriously bad for it. So Dell's just like, hey, let's drop the support tag in and get this sorted out for you real quick. Matter of fact, I've bought used Dell equipment, and Dell had no problem carrying the warranty over to me even though I bought, I bought used equipment, it was three years old, had a five-year warranty. And we used it at my office and Dell covered the warranty when we moved it. They didn't, we just, they said, we want to confirm the address. They had the old address where it was. We gave them our new address. They came and shipped the parts out and uh, fixed the Dell server for us. So yeah, I, I don't know if they, it's been a long time since I've had to do that with Dell, but they were pretty good about that. I like everything. Um, 
about the Frameware laptop from the reviews, but I have no hands-on experience with it. I think it's cool, but I don't have any hands-on, and I don't plan on reviewing it. I'm not really a hardware review channel. Aussie Hot says, ah, yeah, you're not wrong about that. There's that one, but there's a couple other ones too. I've never tried a PF Sense on a NUC. How have you found hosting for your own unified controller? We host it, so we didn't have to look far. Um, if you don't want to deal with hosting it, we recommend Hostify. Good experience. Actually, um, I was going to pull up. This was a discussion that just came up earlier. Where did it go? I I just pulled up a bunch of the uh, Australian hot sauces. We have the entire Aussie barbecue gourmet gift box. So... Um, there was all kinds of stuff. It was like, uh, do I have a picture? What date was that taken? Do I have a picture of everything that was in that box? Oh, here we go. Oh, not that one. There we go. So, yeah, these were good. I, I, and they're not rolled in a way you can see, but this, the morning after one is one I really liked. That one was, that one was really good. Overall, they were, I liked them. <sighs> Mash the like button. Death sauce range and <laughs> inspiring baby hot sauces from Land Down Under. Yes. Awesome. Here's someone else saying they were able to transfer the warranty with Dell. That's great. And the internet, I have a, a use for another sandwich in 20 and not find it. Dude, everything's out of stock. I went to, um, we have a customer that was looking for some used servers. And I'm like, oh, you can get a deal here. And I would double check. I'm like, oh, they're out of stock there or out of stock there. Places are just out of stock even on used servers right now, let alone the backorder problem of new servers. We're up to 119 likes. Um, yes. So if we can get some more likes on there, I'm all for it. <laughs> Helps the YouTube algorithm. Ooh, 120. Slowly but surely. 121. We're watching it climb here. Pretty cool. I like HP servers, but the paywall is BS. Uh, everyone's moving that way. No, I wouldn't say everyone is. That's just some dump. Jeff Jeff from Craft Computing did that video, and it explains why some HPs are, some HPs aren't, and all the confusion around it. And basically, the company was mismanaged for a few years. It was just stupid. You ordered... Three 27-inch all-in-one Dells in November, and they still haven't shipped. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, HP. What a mess. What a messy company. Why can't they just do things right? So on to other thoughts. Now that I have the studio set up and things like that, I want to do more... Um, live streams. Is there a time? Because I have a lot of people. I have 236 people here. Is there a time slot? Currently, it is 524 Eastern Standard Time. Is there a time slot that I should go live a second time a week? Um, I thought about going in the afternoon and maybe that would be better. Uh, I, I want to do maybe 
I read the news type segment and run through some of the articles I find funny and tweet. Not necessarily funny. Sometimes just engaging or interesting, but um, I don't know. Let me know on there. You can leave comments or discuss it now. Uh, I just want to bring that up because I want to do maybe another stream. I thought about, you know, do I... Uh, do something on Discord. I have a Discord. I'm barely ever there is the problem. Um, so that's a really, uh, you know, one of those things like I want to do it more, but I don't know. I'm not good at that at all. Um, if you're looking for a good video on Proxmox, go to Jay from Learn Linux TV channel. I don't do Proxmox, so I don't do videos on it. I don't think you can rely on time zones. Probably not. I will probably upgrade before 2.22.22 um, uh, and get it done. And then, of course, when it comes out, I'll have to do the upgrade again because it's in release candidate now. <laughs> 2 to 3 p.m. my time for European viewers. Actually, uh, world... Clock. That's something we could probably do. So what time is it? So I'm in Detroit. And in Reykjavik, it's 1026. So yeah, uh, it's 1030 and I guess it kind of depends. I don't know. What are some other good European cities? It's only 12 in Honolulu. It is 11.30 in Prague. So I guess it depends on there. Zurich, 11.30. So yeah, if I do it earlier in the day, it's better for Europe. Got it. Uh, what happened to the old office? It still exists. That's where all the employees are. <laughs> so just pick Amsterdam. Fair enough. Choose Berlin. That's probably a good idea. Berlin. So currently, uh, current local time in Berlin is 11.30. So yeah, doing this is getting late for the people in Berlin. But, you know, if I'm feeling inspired and maybe not playing video games, maybe I'll do another live stream today. This would be this is my second one I've already done today. So I already I did consulting in the morning. Didn't have time to do a video because I had some project work to do. Followed up with some clients. Then I went and uh, did a live stream with the folks over at Ninja One. So I did that for a while. And uh, then I had to go do a few more projects, follow up on some emails, and here we are right now doing this live stream. The Ninja One was easier. I don't talk as much, but eventually my voice will start giving out. 527 in Ohio. Watched a video on using one time for everyone and was very inspirational. I Time zones do complicate things a bit, so. For a gnome user, do you realize how KDE... The new office looks. <laughs> uh, no, I can. I actually have this. I could live stream my gaming, I guess, but I'm a pretty boring gamer. I'm not good at it at all. So. Yeah, the. Um, yeah, Maine is in the same. Uh, not everybody realizes Detroit and New York and, you know, the, we're all in the eastern time zone. There's an assumption that we're all the way into um, the next time zone, but Michigan, uh, pretty far through, is all still in the same time zone. What games? Uh, I just finished Horizon Zero Dawn, so really boring probably to watch Tom play Horizon Zero Dawn. I also don't narrate very well for games, so I like The Witcher. I finished The Witcher, and then I finished Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I like Borderlands. I play that with my son. Um, what other games do I play? 
Not that many. I, it's, those are the couple that come to mind. Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, one of my staff says, hey, Tom, you ever did a playthrough on the Wolfenstein? I think it's called New Blood. I have not. I know it's an older game. So I'm doing a playthrough on that. And I'm using this big wide monitor because it supports widescreen. So that's kind of cool. God of War is pretty great. Okay, I might look at that one. Um, I've heard of good things about God of War. I see, or at least I see advertisers. My my staff, all my staff are gamers, so I'm the I'm the odd one out who doesn't really play that many games. My staff, they got games going, the group games going, and everything else. Um, they it's funny because we actually were laughing today that none of them use social media like pretty much at all. I'm the only one using social media because I, I said something was on Twitter and you're like, Tom, none of us use Twitter. <laughs> like you use Twitter, Tom. And one of my staff said, oh, I have a Twitter account. So Tom, so I can see what Tom posted. And I wanted to reply to Tom once. So they set up a Twitter account. <laughs> uh, you need to try Arma 3. What is Arma 3? Oh, um, that one looks open world military based tactical shooter. Okay. You know, a game I, I'm, I loved, I played both one and two, the division. I love that game. That game was spot on, loved it. Enjoyed that game a lot. Um, he, you know, as much as I like the Witcher and like the, uh, horizon zero dawn and that kind of genre. But when I went to, I, I previously had played, um, you know, and did the playthroughs and all the missions for, uh, the other game, it was great. Is Planet Side still a thing? I thought Planet Side, maybe I'm mixing up with something else, was discontinued. Yes, good luck with the PF Sense upgrade. My home office is also a gaming area. PS5 hooked up to my ultra wide screen. So does the PS5 do well with ultra wides? I, I didn't. I'm curious about that. And actually, that's something me and Jay were talking about because uh, Jay from Learn Links TV, if you didn't notice me and him chat a lot, uh, but he's a big console gamer. So uh, I just I don't have anything against console games. I just never really played them. So not I mean, in the Nintendo and Atari days, I did. But that was Nintendo and Atari. I don't really play any racing games uh, anymore. Been gaming the entire time watching. All right. Did the PS Sense of Gravity before work faster? Awesome. Um, I am currently using Pop OS. I like Pop OS a lot. Arma is mostly used to communities to simulate entire regional conflict. You spend a lot of time on patrol and sitting still. Well, yeah, that's actually, um, that's interesting is that is more realistic. I like the whole story behind Desert Bus. And if you don't know Desert Bus, it was, um, well, currently redone by uh, the same, was it? The, the same team that does Borderlands, uh, but Pendulette, it, Desert Bus came out of Pendulette and saying that video games weren't real because real life uh, is not the same as a video game because real life is, you know, driving a bus continuously and boringly that pulls to the left for like hours on end. So, <laughs> A stream with Garner. Yes, that's absolutely. Um, so something behind the scenes, what's going on is we have, oh, you want to come join me? Yeah, I'm taking a two-minute break. Taking a two-minute break? What are you doing? Playing Valorant. Oh. My uh, son, quite the gamer, he's taking a break from Valorant. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Anyways, the, um, speaking of Garner, though, yeah, uh, possibly a live stream with Garner. But we're, me, Jay is the brainchild behind this, but we got a few of us together. 
uh, a few other YouTubers, including Gardner, and we got together like a little group chat going because uh, we want to, you know, cross over onto each other's channels and talk about ways to collaborate together. So I'm absolutely open to it. If Gardner's still here, if not, I'll message him. Uh, but sure. Yeah. Gardner's been around for a while, uh, a.k.a. the Linux gamer. So. Sweden. Sweden. Yes, people said hi, Marcus. Hello. Yeah. Um, someone said pizza time. I like this person's name is Lag Attack. <laughs> that name is great. I've uh, been playing Super Mario World on the Retro Pie. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, we even have a Willie Howe in here. Some oh, some people know your name. Lag attack. <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing at me commenting your name or the fact that my son is uh, flipping off everyone on a live stream. You flipped off like 190 people, Marcus. That's a lot. You've never flipped off 190 people before, have you? No, mostly just on <laughs> Yeah, just catch Nan. So hopefully all is going well for Willie. Cape May, New Jersey. All right. Everyone should know Marcus's name, probably. Yeah, he he dwells just above my uh, office. That's usually where he's at. And I'm like right there. Yeah, he's usually just over there. Yeah, I sit I sit in the roof. Willie knows how to get a hold of me. We use Signal together. You know, got to keep those messages private. How is the weather there? Uh, let's actually look. How Bloody. is it's it's there's a winter storm going on. Yeah, there's a winter storm. So that's what the weather looks like. There's there's your real time Detroit weather feed for Tom's front yard. There's Tom's backyard. It's kind of, this was a flood because it was raining. Now it's snowing. Wait, go to the front door. Oh, and go to the front door? All right. Marcus is going to run up to the front door here. Give a weather report. We'll go full on the front door here. <laughs> Takes, there we go. Now Marcus is at, <laughs> standing barefoot while it's snowing and looking at the front yard. Hopefully he didn't lock himself out. There you go. All right. <laughs> um, signal versus WhatsApp. I don't use WhatsApp. I definitely believe in signal. It's cold. It's the very beginning of a winter storm, so cold uh i like the uh m m crest cameras signal all the way for sure okay uh, getting nasty out in romeo michigan uh this is the um synology surveillance station um, this is version nine, so it's the latest one. It's got a nice look to it. I also have the uh, smart time lapse on, so we can look at. It sees humans. Yeah. Uh, we can play this back here. You can watch it go from not. Actually, let me find a backyard one. There we go. We can watch my yard get flooded. This is a time lapse. It does time lapses, and uh, it's kind of a cool feature. We'll put it at 2x. So it was raining all night. Eh, maybe 4x. There we go. Is that, I thought that was the wind. Yeah, it was windy last night. Raining and windy. But yeah, the 
I'll be doing a new review of this pretty soon. I'll jump all the way ahead here. So, yeah, I'll, I've done some videos on the Synology stuff before. Hey, thank you very much for the super sticker. Where did that go, though? There we go. So, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Cool. <laughs> Humans are the most dangerous animals, for sure. Holler from Hockey Town. I'm assuming H Town, Hockey Town. Uh, non IR night vision cameras. Yes, I just look at my Synology Amcrest video I posted like two days ago. I talk about those. Um, so I'm gonna go back to game. Okay, uh, we are currently having a hurricane warning here in Germany. Hope my basement isn't going to flooded. Yes, hopefully, you do not get flooded. Uh, he's not waiting. You're not waiting for the pizza. You're making your own pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. Someone asked if you're waiting on pizza. The live stream quality have been skyrocketed since the last time I joined. Oh, cool. Um, what model Synology? I here's what I'll do. Look at my Synology video. All that information's in there. Um, that way I don't have to cover all the details. Do you think TrueNAS Scale will make TrueNAS Core obsolete in the long run? Not really. I think TrueNAS Core has probably, at the minimum, the minimum six or seven years. Um, but they're still developing it. They're still they announced version thirteen. So no, I don't see that as a uh, discontinuation. Thank you for all the videos you make. Because if you if I started using Ubiquity five years ago and loved it with PF Sense, awesome. You finally veering away from Unify stack? No, I still use Unify switches and Unify access points. I don't know what would make you think otherwise. Let me um, go over here because I know just so someone can have the answer. Here's that Synology video I did where I list the cameras and everything else. It's all in part of the kit link uh, for it. So. I threw that in the chat. Uh, TrueNAS or Open Media Vault? I never used Open Media Vault, so I have no opinion on it. I'm I prefer TrueNAS. Uh, what are your thoughts on Unraid? I don't use Unraid. It seems like it's popular with home users, um, but I don't use it because it it doesn't have as many features as TrueNAS. So especially around performance, and that matters. And it's not. Yes, there's a way to get ZFS working on it, but it's not natively ZFS, hence um, why I use TrueNAS. Just stopping by to say hi and thank you. Awesome. Happy to see people out stopping by to say hi. PFSense question. If PFSense is configured, HA proxy can snort and Sericata scan the traffic. Yeah, as far as I know, that uh, you, you can still see all the traffic. Uh, they work with each other. All right. Uh, what is... Closing all the tabs I have open. Well, it is bad out there. Because I'm I'm in a basement. That's where my studio is. So I don't really um, didn't really have a uh, um, view of what's going on out there. So I, I it's one nice thing about having camera systems. So I can like, is it nice out? Is it sunny out? I have no idea. My son does look a little bit like me. Um, we buy equipment either from Unify or uh, if it's a bulk order, we'll buy from a company called. Streak Wave, and there's another company I already forgot their name where we buy them from. 
Uh, do you think your media workflow will ever explore a Ceph cluster or stick with your NAS scale with cluster? I don't need Gluster or Ceph for what I'm doing. So it's not likely to be part of my workflow anytime soon. Um, it's just not something I need. But I mean, at some point, maybe I'll do a video on Gluster. I know um, Jay is working on uh, a Gluster or a Ceph video. I don't remember which one. 45 Drives has a lot of good videos on Ceph. Uh, does your affiliate code work even when buying from another country? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, Marcus is definitely, um, he's at that growth age. <laughs> TrueNAS versus Windows File Server. Um, Windows File Server is functional, but yeah, I don't know that it use, I don't know how useful it is. I mean, it depends on your use case, but. I don't, it, it, yeah. Sometimes you have to use Windows File Server for some of the things you're doing. What time is it? Uh, 5.45. We'll give it another 15 minutes. Then I got to go uh, eat. Hate having to use Windows. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, I started doing... Uh, so I've had it set up uh, for my new video editing workflow. I'm using DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve works best in Windows. There's no there's no if, and, or but. It would be such a pain to use it in Linux, even though when they say it supports Linux, they mean it supports it, but it's missing some audio codecs. Yes, I know. I know how to transcode things and remove all the audio and split it out and drag it all back in to DaVinci. That's tedious. When you have like 10 clips to edit, I have to do 10 extra times uh, and then line up the audio. So for now, I'm probably going to be doing all my DaVinci editing in Windows, which is kind of, you know, I was joking. I This computer has two drives in it, two MVMEs, and I actually set which MVME I want to boot. That way I can run Windows when needed. Um, I tell it to boot off the Windows NVMe. I do not like multi-boot when you have the potential to have grub screw up. So I've set it up with you you press F12 on boot on the computer and you choose which one of the NVMEs you would like it to boot. So, yeah. You don't have any problems with audio codecs and resolve. Then you're not importing from common media formats like the format that my phone records in the format the format the sony records in the format the canon they can't do mp4 with the audio that the camera grabs it doesn't work that's a known issue um the workaround is to split the audio out inside of it yeah how to use davinci and linux and converting the audio was a pain in the butt it sure is in Jay has some scripts to do it, but it's just a pain because you're splitting out the audio, then lining it back up. Not that it's hard to do. It's not that this is some insurmountable task. It just becomes kind of a pain to have to do it that way. How do you like Windows 11 Pro? Did you upgrade? No, I'm not. I'm not doing Windows 11. It's a mess. Hey, from South Carolina. That's where Brett is right now. Um, AC3, I think the only thing it supports is uh, PCM. I think that's what DaVinci in Linux supports. Do you have a video going over how your company handles remote managing a customer's network devices? Not... I don't not like specifically a video on it. I mean, what do you mean how we handle it? You'd have to ask a more specific question, maybe in the forums, um, to know what you're. I mean, we remote into it and we set it up. So I don't know uh, specifically about it. Um, it doesn't support like everything records in AAC. And actually the majority of my work is done inside of OBS and OBS doesn't have, I, although someone told me it does, I didn't find any way in OBS for it to um, offer a separate stream in PCM. 
the when you hit the pull down, it's missing. So I don't know how to put it back. I guess it was in a previous version of OBS, but current OBS encodes everything into AAC. So that leaves us back to the splitting the audio. Jay spent a lot more time with it than I have because Jay uses DaVinci Resolve inside of Linux, um, but he does it by splitting the audio with a script. So it's not, like I said, not something that can't be done. It's just extra steps I don't feel like doing. Have you talked about uh, 1Password adding support for Git SSH credential management through their own agent? Nope, I have not because I don't use 1Password. Got to deal with clients? Well, good luck. <laughs> have fun. I got to wind this down anyways. Uh, can I change SSH port to UDP? Not that I know of. I don't think that works. Can Ninja One perform driver updates? Uh, I don't think Ninja One does driver updates. I'm using Streamlabs OBS, um, so it'll work with the Stream Deck. Unless, is there a way to make regular OBS work with the Stream Deck? I don't think so. I think you need the Streamlabs one to work with the Stream Deck. And because I'm using the Stream Deck to do all my switching, I'm using the Streamlabs OBS. I have no idea. Whatever pizza he's getting out of the freezer because it's too crappy out to drive. So you can use the Stream Deck with the regular OBS. Okay. Interesting. Should be a plug-in, but did it manually. No to the Streamlabs. Uh... You do not you need to use Streamlabs OBS to use a stream deck. So it will switch. Okay. Streamlabs use. Yeah, I, I, I'll play around. I have both loaded on my studio computer that, that this plugs into that I'm looking at a monitor when I should be looking right at the camera right there. Um, but yes, I'll do some more testing with that. If, if someone wants to tweet me an exact way to uh, have Streamlabs set the audio out so I don't have to split the clips, that'd be great. Yeah, I have the Stream Deck app because that's how I uh, set all this up is with the Stream Deck app. Stream Deck is another keyboard, but I actually have all the... Um, can I... Will that focus on that? Maybe. There we go. I have all the buttons programmed for all the... It doesn't... It's hard to see it. I have all the buttons programmed for all the different uh, menus. So I know it's another keyboard, but I also like the... the so it's all labeled with all the keys. How do you manage the driver updates in your client? We, we manage all the Windows updates on the network, so I'm not sure what drivers. Usually Windows handles the driver updates. If you use Companion on a Pi with a Stream Deck, you can use both. Huh. Companion on a Pi. Uh, I don't know what that is. I will Google it real quick. Search for companion. Cool. Someone has a video on it. Power Rice Free Trade must have this video. There's what I was looking for. Huh, neat. So I will bookmark that into things that I am interested in. Thank you very much. I learned a lot from the live stream here. <laughs> you can show me how to get PCM out. I'm on Discord. I'm easy to find at Lawrence Systems, so...
Yes, we're still using uh, Google Workspace. Is there a way to share? So like my Discord, I don't know how that works. Um, I have a Discord channel. You can at Lawrence me in there. Is there a way to share like my Discord? Like a link to get people to connect to me. I don't know how. I don't Discord very often if anyone couldn't tell. How do you find someone's Discord? Set status online, my account, user profile. User profile? I don't know. Someone's probably saying Tom is a uh, Tom is a fool on this stuff. Uh, what would you recommend a former Synology user converted to ShootNAS but misses the functionality of Photo Station, Surveillance Station, and DLNS Video Server? I got no suggestions. There's a reason in my rack. There is a Synology for the functions I need to Synology to do, and then there's a TrueNAS for the functions um, that I use for TrueNAS. No, you guys know exactly. So you nailed it there. Ask Marcus. That's exactly what I do. I, I I'm like an old an old man and I go through and uh, hey, cool. You found me on Discord. So at least someone figured it out. <laughs> so I, I, I did reply to you. Um, I think I have all my DM stuff open, but no, I do go ask my son like an old man, like, hey, uh, help, help your old man who owns a tech company figure out how to do Discord things. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So Jim is chipping golf balls at me. This is my friend Jim, and this is his wife, and he's throwing golf balls at the TV. This is actually great. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Tell Jim I said hi, or hi, Jim, who's throwing golf balls at the TV at me. <laughs> oh, man, this is funny. You heard it here first. Tom gets his tech advice from his son. No, I get my Discord advice because Discord is confusing. I don't really completely understand the platform very well. Like it's, it. I don't know. I don't like the way it's laid out very well. My son seems to understand it very well. So he said hi. Wait until you get dad. You're, oh, I get dad. I'm old. Don't, I get that already. Matter of fact, I um, because I I my my daughter and my son are in Discord, so I was playing games with them the other day, and I got confused trying to share my screen with them. They helped me. They were teaching me how to play Valorant. I'm not good at Valorant at all. I'm actually very bad. But I was so bad at the game that joining matches of Valorant with my kids uh, brought in the lower class players. I guess it does matching on that, so that seemed to make them happy. Um, so. <laughs> Something like that. It's 5.57. Do we have any more questions before we wind it down? So we're just wandering around off topics here. Ooh, I got more people messaging me on here. More people on Discord. Awesome. Pending. Accept. Uh, are we doing movie night over Discord next? Maybe. Is that a thing? Do people do that? Do people do movie nights over Discord? I don't know. How does any of that work? Is this a thing? <laughs> I really have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah. Perfect way to end the session. Uh, perfect way to end the session. Just wandering around. Yes. Um, maybe we'll do some wandering around some later or something. We can do another live stream. It'll be impromptu and unplanned. I do want to start another scheduled live stream, though, now that I have the studio. That part I'm serious about. But jumping on and doing live streams, they could happen randomly uh, because I'm home and I want to grab a beer and have a beer with all the audience while I do rapid fire Q&A. And my wife likes to join. My wife joined me for one last Wednesday. Uh, so maybe she'll want to come down here and do it again. So thank you, everyone, for doing all the Q&A and hanging with me while I wandered around through topics of hot sauce, smoking meats, and uh, everything else. So much appreciated.
Yes, so much confusion on here, but I'm gaining new friends on Discord. I, uh, I'm i going to stop the live stream. I will go upstairs, log into Discord while I eat my uh, dinner and say hi to everyone. So thank you. Feel free to connect with me on Discord, on Twitter. Um, bear with me as I'm kind of a Discord noob. Uh, even though I have a channel, I, I have other people that help me admin it because I'm not very good at it. So thank you, everyone, for joining, and I'm out of here.